In the rural bush of Africa, a boy is forced by famine to drop out of school. Yet, with some science books, curiosity, and dreams, he harnesses hope. Hello, and thank you for watching today's episode of That Should Be Movie. Today's book that I recommend this movie is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, Creating Currents, Electricity, and Hope by William Kalumpa or Brian Miller from HarperCollins. William Kalumpa was your typical boy who enjoyed playing soccer and rambo with his friends, hunting with his dog, was fascinated by ghost stories, and scared of magic. He loved going to school and finding odd jobs to on the training post. However, he lived in Maui, a developing nation with an ineffective government who was in constant fear of drought due to the western exportation of the forest. Due to the deforestation, there were no roots in to hold the soil in place, and when the rains came, floods would wash away the ground, necessary to grow the national food staple of maize. One particularly bad famine came in 2002. William describes people wandering in a haze down the road looking for food, and the horrors of seeing people die from hunger. He recalls desperate lines of people waiting for, for food and the struggles that ensued afterward, and the imagery promises of the government. He admits his own weakness in which he stole more than his fair share from the family supply. One particularly heartrending scene comes when he has to put his dog down in the mercy queue. The famine leaves the Kwampa family destitute. William is forced to drop out of school because he can no longer afford the fees. He tries to sneak back into school and is caught. Yet, this does not kill his desire to learn his curiosity. Upon visiting a library for the first time in his life, he discovers some abandoned science books. And even though they are in English with large complicated words, he discovers from the drawings and illustrations that he can use a windmill to generate a luxury that only 2% of Maoians have, electricity and running water. Armed with these books and his dream, he begins collecting junk from the dump. He finds an old bicycle and by pedaling it, finds out the difference between alternate and direct currents. By following the diagram in the book, he uses old tractor parts, such as voyage and rotors, sock absorbers, old wire, pipes, batteries, radio parts, and whatever else he can scavenge, as well as a bicycle, to build a windmill. His friend Godfrey helps him collect batteries and belts. While pursuing his dream, William faces ridicule from the villagers who call Melissa crazy, but he ignores them. He faces conflict with his family, as his seemingly impossible activity distracts from farm work and endangers them when the windmill falls down. Yet he is determined not to become one of the drops who just grew through life after dropping out of school. Eventually, William's determination is repaid when the windmill does begin producing electricity and water. People from the village who call him crazy begin coming to see light bulb in his family's hut. Word spreads for miles around, eventually around the world. William gets to appear on TED Talks and is rewarded a scholarship. He now produces water and electricity for the whole village through solar power and is part of the indigenous think tank for the purpose of Africans helping Africans help themselves. The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind is a great family and inspirational film ready to happen. There is the excitement of the protagonist defying the mockery of the crowd. There is a story of friendship and William's father supporting his son's curiosity and desire to learn. But most importantly, there is a timeless message that no matter who or where you are, nothing can stop you from the power of pursuing your dreams. I'm surprised Steven Spielberg or Disney hasn't picked up a William story yet. Because of its universal truths about the power of determination, curiosity, and dreams, I highly suggest that The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kwampa should be a movie. Thank you for watching. Please let us know in the comments section what book about following dreams you think should be a movie.